Recently, it was reported that Kamala Harris dropped out of the presidential race. Sometimes reality can take a while to sink in. Perhaps this isn't the most accurate view of the larger zeitgeist in, the candidate, in her candidacy, but it seems like there, that there, there's a lot of polarized opinions about Kamala Harris. These opinions range from calling her a cop to a neoliberal elite to a progressive. That last one is the truly shocking one out there. The people that are calling her a progressive are the ones justifying it because she's the second black woman to be elected into Congress. And though that's a pretty big deal in a country that hasn't gotten over slavery, it does not make her progressive. Identity alone doesn't garner you the title of progressive. And just because it's in your tagline, Kamala for the people, doesn't mean that you're actually for the people. I mean, I could say Krish for the birds, but it doesn't mean that I actually stand for the birds. In fact, I don't. And if you look at my record, I'm, I'm pretty anti-bird. Okay, birds were dinosaurs, and, and they know it. Okay, they used to rule this world, and now they want it back. And they're plotting to get it back. Okay, so let's look at Kamala Harris's actual records and see if she's a real progressive or if it's all just identitarian hearsay. As a DA in San Francisco, Harris wanted to prosecute the parent of truant kids. This has become the flagship fact to remove the label of progressive from Kamala Harris. Kids that live in a low-income neighborhood face a lot of challenges as it is, from bullying to not fitting in. So they might not want to go to school, but the parents themselves face even more challenges. So why make it harder for people in an already hard situation? As California's district attorney, Kamala Harris gave herself the nickname of Top Cop. First of all, why? Cops are not really in vogue right now. Okay, we're not, we're not all waiting to see the new, fun, exciting cop movie like Kindergarten Cop or Beverly Hills Cop. But right now, you know, all, all the movies about cops are grittier dramas that revolve around the complexity of being an officer like End of Watch or the show the Cops. Besides, I don't trust anyone that's just giving themselves nicknames. You know, those are always the people that are trying too hard to look cool. I'm surprised that her campaign slogan wasn't Make America Cops Again. The top cop fought hard to make sure people weren't released early from prison because then California would lose its very precious prison labor to make shit. I I'm sorry, did I say labor? Labor is something that you get paid a fair amount of money for doing. I meant slavery. Harris a half-black woman fought to keep innocent people in prison to maintain prison slavery. Now, she did disavow this and made a statement that she really didn't do much to push the needle of mass incarceration in a progressive direction. And I think this lack of action should take the title of progressive away from Kamala Harris. Harris also had a pretty consistent gaffe on the subject of Medicare for All. At one point, she said she was all for it, and then she retracted the statement. So here's the Medicare for All that plan that Kamala Harris had in place. She wanted to expand the role of private corporations in Medicare to increase the strength in the program. Uh, wait, uh, what? Aren't we all in the mess that we're in now because private corporations are the ones that are hiking the prices of necessary drugs and procedures? Well, why, why in the hell would we put them in charge of Medicare? You know, Mayor Pete has Medicare for all who want it. Uh, Kamala's plan is Medicare for all who can profit. And here's the secret. We aren't profiting from this plan. Harris's plan to get rid of student debt was, vir vir student debt was virtually non-existent. A viral tweet laid out her plan to erase Pell Grant debts to businesses that successfully stay open in low-income neighborhoods for three years. I get the spirit, but wouldn't giving these businesses an immediate tax benefit be a stronger way to help them deal, uh, deal with and overcome the adversities of starting a new business in the first place? Harris came out and said that she wouldn't accept corporate money and then basically did the opposite of that. 
She accepted money from lobbyists and big corporations like Disney, Amazon, and Apple. So if she's getting money from these large corporations, who do you think she's really fighting for? So really, we should change that slogan from Kamala for the people to Kamala for the LLCs, Kamala for the S-Corps, Kamala for anyone hiding their money in the Caymans. Look, Harris dropped out of the race because her record cannot be ignored. She hasn't done much to clear her record other than make excuses and try to ban Trump's Twitter. Her record proves that she's not a progressive. She's another candidate that toes the line for the corporate elites. She's another well-spoken candidate flying the colors of the identity politics to hide her dark truths. But we turned on the light. Now let's keep it on. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, for tuning into uh, my channel. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell to be notified of more videos. Uh, and if you also like this content, you will probably like my live stand-up comedy. It talks about a lot of similar issues that I talk about in these videos. So if you're a fan of issue-driven, intelligent, socially conscious comedy, I hope that you make it out to one of my live stand-up comedy shows. I'm doing my very last show of 2019 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on December 21st at the Glitterbox Theater. Tickets are available for that show right now. And then in 2020, I will be at the venue on the 35th in Norfolk, Virginia. I will be at the Comedy Closet Comedy Club in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm going to be coming to the station in Carborough, North Carolina. Uh, and then I'm going to be at Caffeine Underground in New York City. And I'll also be opening for my good friend Lee Camp in Philadelphia at the Ruba Club on January 25th. For my entire tour schedule, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I hope to see you guys at one of these live shows, and we'll see you on the road.